Uh, yes, we have apologies from councillors Mike Band, Kevin Dinas, and Michael Goodridge. Thank you. Thank you. And have members declared any interests? Uh, none before. Oh, you're, you've got. Um, oh, no, that's no, central, that's isn't central, it? Central, yes. None on this um, okay. agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do members have any other non pecuniary or disclosable pecuniary interests to declare? Councillor Seaborn. Right, when I get myself organised, um, I need to declare a non-pecuniary interest in that I was present at the uh, Bramley Parish Council meeting that discussed the uh, application that we're going to consider later. Uh, Councillor Byam. Yes, I should have phoned in and I apologise uh, or, or de declared error. Although the applicant on this ap application's name is, is an agent or whatever, I know the, the owner of the land and have known for the last... 30 odd years because he, he used to live in the village, no longer does. Thank you. Um, Emma, have there been any questions received from members of the public? No, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Are there any updates to government guidance or legislation that the committee should be aware of, Peter? Thank you, Chairman. Um, no updates to the committee today. Thank you. Uh, just a notification in the event of site inspections being necessary, but I think most of us were there on Monday anyway, as a result of consideration of the applications at this meeting. These will be held on Monday the 3rd of April at a time to be agreed. Now to move on to the application, which is the subject of tonight's meeting. This is item B1, outline application for the erection of five dwellings with access from Park Drive along with associated parking and amenity space with some reserved matters as amended by letter received on the 6th of January, at land to the rear of Orchard Cottages, Park Drive, Bramley. Rebecca, would you like to introduce the application to the members, please? Thank you, Chairman. The site is located on the northern side of Park Drive and largely refers to a rectangular parcel of land. There are neighbouring residential properties to the north, the east and southeast. The site currently comprises an area of overgrown grassland. As shown on the aerial photograph, there is a small area in the southwestern corner which is informally used for the parking of vehicles in connection with the Godwin Angling Society. You can see the lakes on the west there. And a gate is located in this corner which leads to the lake beyond. To put the site in some context, the photograph on screen is taken from the southwestern corner. The site is open to the south with existing access from Park Drive. The northern and eastern boundaries feature close board fencing. The northern boundary can be seen in the top left photograph. This shows the boundary fencing with the two-storey neighbouring properties of Mill Lane beyond. The southern boundary, as shown in the top right photograph, is open in nature, with a residential building to the immediate south of the site. The bottom left photograph shows the informal parking area with the gate behind, behind. And the bottom right photograph is taken from the southeast corner of the site looking into the site. The application seeks outline planning permission for the erection of five dwellings with all matters reserved except for access and layout. Access would be as existing by a park drive, which is to the south. This is a private road which does not form part of the public highway. The applicant has set out that the existing road surface within the application sight line would be repaired and resurfaced. This would be a matter which could be controlled via condition should members resolve to grant planning permission. Of the five proposed dwellings, two would be affordable shared equity dwellings and three would be market dwellings. The two affordable dwellings would be semi-detached with two bedrooms and the three market dwellings would be detached, two would be three bedroomed, and one to the east would be four bedroomed. No information has been provided at this stage in respect to the indicative height and design of the proposed dwellings. This would be subject to outstanding reserve matters. Each proposed dwelling would benefit from two parking spaces and private amenity space to the rear. Whilst no information has been provided with regard to the elevational detailing of the proposed dwellings at this stage, the slide on screen sets out some of the distances involved between the proposed dwellings and that of neighbouring dwellings. Officers would anticipate the proposed dwellings would be all two-storey in height. 
Officers have carefully considered the result and impact to residential amenity and are satisfied that on balance, any impact would not be of a material scale such to warrant a refusal for refusal. In terms of site constraints, the application site falls within the green belt. Members will see on the current slide that the northern section of the application site, if I just point that out, falls within the rural assessment boundary, which is outlined in black. The southern uh, section of the application site, where the proposed dwellings would be located, falls outside of the rural assessment boundary. No material concern is raised by officers with regard to the loss of agricultural land. There is an, exist an existing access gate in the southwest corner, serving the lake beyond, and the proposed development would result in the loss of this access point. However, any future plans to reinstate an access point to the lake would be a matter to be considered with the council at a later stage, should it require permission. The provision of affordable housing units would be a benefit to housing provision. Further, having regard to the proposed site layout, officers consider that there would be no material detrimental harm to neighbouring residential amenity, trees, archaeology, or adverse impact to the setting of the conservation area. Whilst the access would be via a private road falling outside the jurisdiction of the County Highway Authority, officers are satisfied that the proposal would not prejudice highway safety or the free flow of traffic adjoining the public highway network. The proposal is, however, recommended ref for refusal on the grounds that it would conflict with local and national greenbelt policy and would result in harm to the landscape character of the area. Officers consider that no very special circumstances have been for put forward to justify the setting aside of greenbelt policy in this particular instance. The adverse impacts are therefore considered to outweigh the benefits of the scheme. The matters of principle and technical opinion are set out on the left-hand side of the screen, and the matters of judgment are the greenbelt consideration and very special circumstances, landscape considerations and visual amenity, the impact on residential amenity, provision of amenity and play space, and parking considerations. If I could just now draw members' attention to the update sheet. An update to the affordable housing section of the agenda report is set out on the uh, update sheet. As the scheme would include affordable housing and in the absence of a signed Section 106 agreement, an additional reason for refusal is set out on the, on the agenda sheet. Uh, with regards to consultee responses, the Environment Agency has no comments to make. And if I could just make a verbal update, we have received comments from Thames Water this afternoon. They raise no objection but recommend informatives. Um, there have been additional comments that have been received from a neighbour who has previously raised an objection. The comments refer to the use of the proposed four-bedroom property as a rectory and there being no formal agreement in place to secure this. Officers would advise that the five dwellings proposed would all be for residential use, irrespective of who would occupy each dwelling. The assessment to be made is therefore whether the provision of five dwellings in the location proposed would be acceptable in planning terms. For the reasons previously outlined, officers consider that the proposal would not be acceptable. So in line with reasons one and two, as set out on pages 53 and 54 of the agenda report, and the additional reason three, as set out on the update sheet, officers therefore recommend that be permission be refused. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, members, I open it up to you. Councillor Seaborn. Thank you, Chairman. So as one of the two local members, let me start by thanking the officers for issuing a clear and comprehensive report, which in my view largely captures all the key issues. Let me also thank members for joining the site visit on Monday. I requested this visit so that members could clearly see the context in which this site sits, and that, that, I think that was very helpful. Bramley's got a requirement under the draft local plan to find sites for a net increase of 70 dwellings by 2032. Recent new builds and sites for which approval have been given make significant inroads into that total. However, unless brownfield sites become available, applications for genuine new builds will repeatedly be uh, confronted by the AGLV and Greenbelt issues that are cited by officers when proposing uh, refusal of this application. Uh, 
So it's going to be the case that local members will be left to listen to the local views of the parish council, the Bramley Village Society, and indeed residents, or particularly residents, uh, and support those sites that cause the least intrusion to the AGLV and Greenbelt. In the case of the application before us, I believe that we're effectively looking at an infill site with dwellings or gardens on three sides. It's partly within the settlement boundary and partly adjacent to the settlement boundary. And the site is similar in setting to the nearby land at Ricardo Court, where this committee granted outline permission for 24 dwellings in 2014. The proposed development would contribute in uh, a small way to the need for affordable housing in the village and in my view has a very limited impact in terms of intrusion on the openness of the area. Local objections have been few and many focus on issues that are actually reserved and so are not for consideration this evening. It's my belief that this site should be treated as an exception to the Greenbelt rules because of its adjacent setting to the settlement and having seen the, the site firsthand, colleagues are well positioned to draw their own conclusions on this issue, which is really, I think, the, 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 the substantive issue before us this evening. So while this goes against the letter of the Waverley 2002 local plan policies and the MPPF, I don't believe the site actually goes against the spirit of uh, those policies. If the committee is minded to agree that the site is indeed suitable as an exception, then uh, we would, I would suggest that several conditions need to be made to an outline approval, and uh, Rebecca has um, already indicated some of those. Um, firstly, the parking provision needs to be increased to meet Waverley's minimum parking guidelines, and this issue is alluded to on page 32 of our papers. Secondly, the Parish Council has received assurance that the site owner will make good the private access road, and again, that was mentioned uh, in our... Um, introduction uh, from the point where it joins the adopted part of Park Drive up to the western boundary of the site. I feel this definitely should be made a condition should we agree to uh, um, approve this application uh, and also a maintenance fund um, stipulated to ensure that the, uh, the private road is maintained for a reasonable time into the future. And then thirdly, the access to Mill Lake for anglers was mentioned, and I think it should be stipulated that the, uh, the owners of the site should make some arrangement with the, uh, um, the anglers to ensure that this can continue as a leisure amenity, be it relocation of the gate or relocation of additional parking space. So I'll listen with interest to colleagues' views. At this point, I'm minded to support the application subject to the imposition of suitable conditions and to vote against recommendation to refuse the application. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Seaborn. Councillor Gray. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A point of clarification. If we, um, the, the application, again, is an outline permission without all things reserved except for access, and I think layout was the, what we said. Um, Rebecca gave a, an excellent presentation there. It was very clear. Um, and could be heard even with my poor um, hearing. Um, if, however, we wanted to put some conditions on it as to height or whatever and defer this, can we do that or do we have to reject it? That's my question. I'd like to come back afterwards. Peter or Dan, who would like to answer that one? Thank you, Chairman. Um, thank you, Councillor Gray. Um, it would be difficult to control it at this stage. Because that matter is reserved, um, it would be a matter that we have to control. I mean, we can listen to any comments of what you think might be the right scale in the committee, but it, it wouldn't necessarily be something that we can control under this application or this, this stage of the application. It would be a point where we, we need to assess when the reserve matters come in. Um, but if there's an idea of what the committee like in terms of height, they might give an indication here, but uh, as I say, it, it is a reserve matter. So, thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor Gray, did you wish to continue? I'm quite, ha quite happy to, to hear. I mean, it's, it is disappointing that for something that's fairly contentious, we didn't get slightly more of a full application. Um, we're having to guess a bit on this. Um, having visited the site and having looked at it on the plan, it would seem to me that a relatively small change in boundary um, would include the whole of the site. 
um, and I'm not sure whether Bramley is considering that in, in part two. Um, the site itself is pretty scrubland. Um, it's hardly an amenity. And I'm influenced as much by the lack of objections from neighbours and also from the parish council. Um, rural villagers do need to look very carefully at how they're going to hit the um, allocation of houses from the local plan and, and take on board what uh, Councillor Seaborn said in terms of hitting its, its own number. So I would be minded to um, reject the refusal and go for granting permission. Councillor Townsend. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I've just got a couple of questions, really, on the access road. Um, I note the comment already made about the parking and um, the need to increase that. Um, the access road, I was just wondering how a refuse truck is going to be able to access the site and how it's going to be able to turn round. The road doesn't seem to be sufficient for that to happen. And I just wondered if officers perhaps could uh, comment on that at all. Rebecca, would you like to address that, or one of your colleagues? Okay, well, Cou Councillor Byron would like to speak, so perhaps he's got something to add to this. Well, I was going to actually try to answer that question. Of course, you've got to, uh, on the on, on that area immediately opposite where the first house is, there is a, a converted barn, which is two dwellings. That was converted probably about seven or eight years ago. I can't remember exactly. And, of course, the refuse truck already comes up to the, the, um, the area where the, the courtyard is, where there are, I think, 12 dwellings in there and all the, the amenity bins, etc., cetera, that are there. So it obviously gets that far. And, of course, that road itself, a bit of track and a pretty horrible track in many ways, um, and we, the early, early arrivers at the site visit found a very large articulated lorry coming down there from the yard well beyond that site, at the bottom left-hand corner of that site, which it's a, it's a storage depot for, for um, fencing, access fencing. But the other point that I w w w want to make, and thank to Councillor Seaborn for his presentation on that, um, we obviously at some stage need more and more housing, uh, and we need more and more affordable housing. And we were checking the numbers of uh, Bramley has been quite well blessed with council housing over the years, but it's of course lost a tremendous amount. So we actually have at the moment 196 houses which are in local council accommodation. I don't think we've got any any properties that are in housing association ownership. Um, except for six shared ownership properties alongside Bramley Grange. We lost 101 of the original numbers of council houses and dwellings to um, right to buy. So it's quite a considerable change. Well over 30, 30%, 35, 36% have been lost. And this application, of course, gives two additional affordable houses to add to the mix that we already have and indeed the other property that was mentioned which is just down the way is that that is 60 percent affordable housing being brought forward by the same same applicant um, so overall i'm i also am supportive of this this application i believe it's the right thing to do it's uh, we drew a very purposely drew a very tight boundary around the the uh, all the parishes and, and towns when we did with the local local plan review 17, 18, 19 years ago, whatever time it was when we actually did this part, uh, and, and I was involved in that. And we would do a tight boundary to, to control applications like this where you, you get what you want. And of course, rules have changed, but overall, that to us was correct. And rounding it off slightly um, with these applications, if it need, we decide to, we need to uh, address the, the um, uh, built boundary of the village uh, as part of that which we may or may not decide to do as part of a, of a, a neighbourhood plan which we're starting in Bramley now um, would be a reasonable thing to do um, but we're not, I don't think we'll want to expand it tremendously and to open up the whole countryside to, to development.
Thank you, Councillor. Um, officers, did you want to expand on the answer to uh, Councillor Townsend's question? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Apologies for the delay. Just, just um, checking on the plan. Councillor Byam pretty much covered off the, the turning provision that's already available there, and we've just popped this site plan up on, on screen. Um, currently, refuse vehicles has to get to here in a forward gear and then reverse and turn at, turn at this point. So that is the provision that's available to a refuse truck if it was to serve these properties. So it would have to come in, do that, that point of turn, and, and take a point there. Thank you, Chairman. There's, there's no, nothing further. Thank you, Peter. Councillor Townsend, you wish to come back? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, having, having gone down the road there, at the moment where the two um, smaller houses are, I mean, from the update sheet, it does say that they haven't, um, the affordable housing isn't guaranteed. Is that what it's saying on the update sheet? Um, because at the moment there is a park, you know, a car park there. So my kind of idea is that they, at the moment the refuse trucks come in and they can easily turn there because there is actually a small hard standing area on the access to the, to the lake. And at this moment in time, I, I'm just not convinced that a refuse truck can come up back into that person's drive because there are gates there and, and turn round. And I'm just concerned about the, the safety because it's not a very wide road. And if there's not adequate parking, people will park on the, on the road and therefore a refuse truck will not be able to get up there and adequately get back again in, in a safe or in a forward gear. It wouldn't be able to do it. Um, my concern, you know, that is my concern. Thank you. I think the update sheet refers, you're, you're talking about the first few paragraphs about section 106. And, and I think that is just, um, it's because the section 106 hasn't been completed to make these affordable houses and it hasn't been completed because it's recommended for refusal. So they, they I don't, I think I'm right in saying they wouldn't have been asked to enter into a section 106 at this time. So I, I think should the committee be minded to reject the officer's recommendation and, and grant permission, then a section 106 would be one of the conditions attached to that. Councillor Vorozhevsky. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. I think that's a, a point well made with regard to the actual road itself and the access, because that's what we're here tonight to determine, which is the um, outlined permission. I do think it's very regrettable that um, we are looking at an application here that is for outline and not reserved at this stage because it, it's, it's for a small number of houses and it could have been done and the decision to grant or refuse would have been made much easier on that. It says throughout the report, you know, very special circumstances must e exist to justify losing this piece of green belt. Well, I, I'm grateful for having gone on the site visit because um, it was more like scrubland to me. It was, it was, you know, it's more infilling and I think that's where the very special circumstances um, are, should be considered is that it, it is more of an infill and that the land itself is not what I would consider to be green belt. Um, and as I say, I regret the very fact of the nature of it being a reserved matter because I think we could have done better at this stage and made our decision easier. Regrettably, whilst I um, hate to see any loss of green green fields or green belt, uh, I do think the special circumstances ex exist here and um, I for one would not be able to support the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Henry. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, I, I too benefited greatly by, by having the, the, the site visit uh, on, on Monday. Thank you very much for that. Um, I concur with a number of councillors um, the, the, this evening with regard to, to, to building in the rural villages. This is qu it's quite a challenge, and finding sites within the settlement or a butt in the settlement is, um, is extremely difficult. Um, since the, uh, the appeal in 1992, it would seem that a, a couple of um, uh, developments are, have already taken place. Uh, the, the barn immediate the opposite and the um, 
um, the, the buildings that, that uh, were mentioned in Bramley Park Court. So I, I, I would suspect that the settlement probably in stage t two of the local plan may, may, may change with re re regard to that. However, having said that, I think this is a, a, a very useful site, um, very close to the community and sustainable uh, within walking distance of the, the village. Um, and um, I, I, I think that that, 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 that is, is a plus in, in that um, sense. Um, and it would appear that the, both the Parish Council and the Bramley uh, Conservation Society are, are, are quite positive about this uh, application. Um, uh, we're going to get um, the, the offer of two affordables is very get, very good, and then three marketables, um, which, which is also very good, and with parking, and within uh, the, the, the um, a, a stone's throw of the village. Um, I think this is very sustainable, and um, um, I think it could be acceptable. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Henry. I tend to agree with everything that's been said, and I think I'm minded to go along with the the majority that uh, it sounds as if this may well be approved uh, one concern i do have is is that the illustrative site plan there um, and i'm sure this is what councillor gray had picked up on on earlier when he spoke about the height they appear to have dormer windows on the front of all the properties and um, is there any way we can, can we put an, an informative on to say that three stories will be strongly um, fought against, resisted, that's the word I was looking for, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. It, it is a reserve matters. What, what's helpful, I think, is that you've expressed that at the committee. We can convey that back if the application were to come forward at a reserve matters stage, but an informative wouldn't hold any weight, and I think we'll take it as a note and make sure that it's conveyed to them, but we can't control what they come back with, but obviously we can provide that advice. Um, I've got a few comments to just sort of make on around the very special circumstances. Yes, please. Is Thank it you. okay to come back on that? Um, I, just listening to members, and I appreciate the, the comments that have been made, I, ju I just wanted to highlight... I think one of the key points has been hi highlighted as a very special circumstance is a housing need and the need for housing in um, Bramley and around the area and the limited opportunity within the settlement. Just um, page 50 of your agenda where we talk about the very special circumstance. Uh, I just want to reiterate, and I'm sure you've taken this into account, but um, the fourth paragraph down under very special circumstance is clear that we, we had a ministerial statement in July 2013 which confirms that unmet housing need is not a matter that outweighs harm to the green belt to constitute very special circumstances and justifying appropriate development in the green belt. So I just need to make that point that that has been clarified from a ministerial level that that, that shouldn't be an overriding very special circumstance um, and obviously would undermine protection of the green belt. Um, there was also a comment about whether it could be removed through the neighborhood plan and local plan part two. The, the neighbourhood plan doesn't, unfortunately, have the, the power to remove from the green belt. It would be through local plan part two. And um, within local plan part one, as drafted, it doesn't highlight this area as an area to be removed from the green belt. So I just wanted to make that point for members to, to take into account. Sorry, did you say it does highlight it or doesn't? So it doesn't highlight doesn't. it to be Thank removed. You. To be removed. Thank, you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the main thing I think here to, to get right will be the fact that the applicant will make sure that the road is suitable for the traffic that will be going up and down. And there will be, I, I know, I, I assume, a condition put on to make sure that it will be looked after once the road has been done up in the first place. But bearing in mind the size of the vehicle that went down the road that particular morning, uh, I went on down, the dog and I walked on down, and um, we were looking for knotweed, actually. We didn't see it anywhere. <laughs> um, the, um, the Coleman's yard at the bottom, there's quite a large turning area down there. So it might, if there was a problem at all with vehicles, any vehicles coming and going in one direction, it might be as well 
to ask the owner perhaps to do the road right down to the Coleman's yard so that there was no possibility of anybody being stuck. Is a condition going to be, could a condition to that effect be put on this application, please? Let's ask the officers. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Um, if, if we were to get to that stage, we, could, we can draft an appropriate worded condition. We've just popped up that location plan to show the extent of ownership of the applicant and what we could secure is the improvement within that red, red boundary. So it doesn't go quite all the way up, but it will go as far as they own and we could control that. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Thank you, Chairman. Oh, I forgot to switch my microphone off then. Um, yes, I, I don't think we've, we've really got any... Um, leeway over land that belongs to other people have we and it might also open it up to further development so uh, have to be careful on that one councillor townsend and then councillor vorozhevsky thank you chairman thank you for clarifying the um, 106 um, agreement on the update sheet as well for me um the other concern that i have about this development is to the right of the site on the uh, eastern boundary there are some very small bungalows. Now I know that it's been commented that uh, there hasn't been many complaints against this. However, I do believe that the occupants of those bungalows are actually um, council tenants and they may not feel perhaps uh, that they can make a, a complaint. I know I've spoken to somebody in Cranley before and uh, they said they were scared about making complaints uh, to the council in case it affected you know, their tenancy. Not that it would, obviously, but they were just a little bit concerned. Um, my concern is that the, the big house there that's on the boundary on the eastern one, which was meant to be for, this, um, uh, for the Church of England, which obviously isn't now, is that it's a very, very large um, house to be next to the bungalows there. And they are very small bungalows. They really are tiny. And I'm, I know this isn't reserved matters, and I know, and I know as Councillor Forzeski said, um, that it would be much easier if we had that in front of us here, but we haven't. But whether or not there is any, in any way to, to try and ensure that there's not such a large house next to such small bungalows, and whether or not it can be blended more into the development at all. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Vorozhevsky. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I listened with great interest to what Peter said. Um, and there's always the worry that when we give, if we was to grant permission for this, that we might be opening ourselves up for the other parcels of green belt that are in around that area. And that's now concerning me. Can I ask, please, is this piece of land, does it form any kind of strategic gap? Peter. Yes, th thank you, Chairman. It's not a strategic gap, but it is AGLV, so Area of Great Landscape Value, so that's its landscape designation on top of the green belt. Thank you, Chairman. Did you wish to add to that? <laughs> You're uh, wondering what the great landscape value of that piece of scrubland is, aren't you? <laughs> well, it, it's the strategic, although it's not a strategic gap, it is protecting that, isn't it? So it is like a buffer, which puts a little different view for me on it now based on that and I would have said as well one of the reasons that I think it was worthy of building on this because of the, the quality of the land was the fact that if we'd have had a reserved matter that non-reserved matter it would have made it so, so much easier but now I'm just worried, worried if we give up this parcel of land will it open up the will it open up to other people coming forward are we going to set a precedence by doing that? And I'll be guided by local members and, um, on this because that does concern me slightly. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Byam. Difficult to know how to comment construct Well, I can comment constructively from my point of view. I, I, I rather smiled when Rebecca made the point that it was grassland. Um, uh, I haven't been blackberry in there, but... Uh, it was covered, obviously, in brambles and everything else. Pretty awful. Actually, more awful than I expected. It actually been cleared quite a lot in terms of just being no, no scrub on top when the, the, two, the barn was converted some years ago. Uh, and at one stage, and I think there's a lot of hardcore under there, actually. There's no... Because there was parking, uncontrolled parking, actually, by properties 
in in uh, Mill Lane, where, where somebody used to run a nursery in, in one of the houses, and that's long since ceased and, and no, no longer happens. So um, I can't see that, that land ever... It, well, it's difficult to know how, what you would bring it back to in terms of productive land uh, in any way in, in the Greenbelt. And, uh, I, I, well, in the, up to, in the main agenda, of course, it was applied for uh, for planning permission, what, 15 years ago or 20 years ago, or something like that, a long time ago, uh, and, and was refused at that stage. Um, and I, I think that uh, the time has come personally for all this to, to come forward for housing, bearing in mind the strong demand we have from everywhere to build more and more houses. And this is the, the it can't be a better place, I don't think, in, in any village than a piece of land like this, as it looks, um, with such good access to the village, the shops, all the amenities, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and therefore, as I said, I, I would wish to support the, the approval of this application. Thank you. Members, any last questions before we move to the recommendation? So the recommendation is that permission be refused for the reasons one to two set out on pages 53 and 54 of the agenda report, plus additional reason three set out on the update sheet. May I have those in favour of the recommendation to refuse, please? Uh, that's two. And those against? Thank you, members. The recommendation to refuse is rejected. Um, so now we, I need a recommendation to grant and somebody to second it, please. So, um, yes, I, I'm happy to propose that uh, the recommendation is agreed. Thank you very much. So we now need some, uh, oh, we need to vote on that first, don't we? On that recommendation. Do we, or do we? Have, Do, do we do the reasons before the vote, or this is what we were discussing yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, okay. Yes. So, can we have all, all those in favour of the, uh, the proposition by Councillor Seaborn that uh, this application be approved or granted planning permission? Okay, that's eight. And those against? Two. Okay. Thank you. So now we need some jolly good reasons to uh, back up our decision. Members, first of all, and then I'm sure the officers will knock them into shape. Thank you. Councillor Seaborn, you look ready to speak. <laughs> I feel I ought to. Um, <laughs> just uh, trying to take on board the, the comments that uh, Peter made to make sure that we actually give the right reasons. Um, because, the, you know, in essence, this is overcoming the uh, the green belt objection and uh, uh, you know I, th I think the the fact that this is effectively an infill site and not genuinely open green belt would be the uh, the, the principal reason of concern for me so if, if that's an acceptable reason I think that's that's principally what's on my mind Anything from the officers to expand on that, please? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, we, we do need to be very explicit in our reasons for granting, so it's helpful. We've been listening to the discussion and got some notes here. But um, well, I'll read out what I suggest should be our reason for granting, and I'll let members comment on that. But um, very special circumstances exist that outweigh the harm to the greed belt and any other harm. The site is, is unique in its physical characteristics, and the application provides a particularly advantageous opportunity to provide affordable, some affordable dwellings in Bramley Village. Um, the site is surrounded on two sides by development, within, which are within the defined settlement boundary of Bramley. Consequently, development within the site would not appear materially intrusive within the wider landscape and will be well integrated into the fabric of the settlement. The proposal would provide both market and affordable housing. The site would be in walking distances to facilities or services and facilities in Bramley, and as such, the day-to-day -day needs of future occupiers would, could be met without heavy reliance on private motor vehicle. In addition, the proposal would not harm the character and appearance of the conservation area. 
Um, yeah, so happy to take questions on that or anything. Further. Okay, any comments from members? Okay, now presumably we need to also put some conditions on this planning permission that we're about to grant. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, conditions, and we'd also been asking for, um, so permission be granted subject to the applicant entering into an appro or a suitable legal agreement in respect to the provision of the affordable housing and conditions and informatives. Um, Rebecca has got some draft conditions, which it's okay, I'll hand over to Rebecca just to, to talk through the headlines of what those conditions would be. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, just to pick up on some conditions, um, if I just give you an overview of what the conditions would, uh, would relate to. So the first two would be setting out the time frame in which we would expect the Reserve Matters application to be submitted um, and the works to be um, begun. Um, we would obviously have a plans number condition, um, a landscape and eco ecological management plan, um, we've also got some uh, land contamination conditions that have been recommended by the Council's Environmental Pollution Officer. So there are a total of three that have been recommended there. Um, we've also got some recommended conditions from the Council's Environmental Health Officer uh, with regards to um, a scheme to protect occupants from noise and vibration. Um, we've got a hours of construction works condition, um, no flood lighting or external lighting during the construction process, no burning of any trade waste or other materials during the construction process. Um, we've also got a condition picking up on the proposed resurfacing and repair works to Park Drive, um, so that would be secured um, in accordance with the scheme to be first submitted and agreed in consultation with the County Highway Authority. Um, a construction transport management plan. And I believe uh, that covers all the conditions. There obviously would be a number of recommended informatives that we would add on. If members would like to suggest any further conditions, uh, please let me know. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, there seem to be a lot of trees on there, so I wonder if we should have a, a tree protection scheme. And, uh, hmm? well, there, there, there's lots of trees and things shown on there as, as, as coming down. So, and there will be trees that, that could be damaged by the construction process. So. Yeah, uh, well, Councillor Gray wanted to add something and then Councillor Townsend. Is it possible to put a condition in there as to uh, car parking? I noticed that the four bedroom only has two car parking and I think that's below the uh, Waverley standard. And certainly taking the point that um, Councillor Townsend made about uh, refuse trucks, then we should make sure that the maximum amount of parking is provided there so can we put a condition in for that? Peter? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Yes, we've used similar conditions before on outline applications, and we can put some wording together to require them to comply with the Council's own guidelines. Um, so, yeah, we can add that. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Townsend. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm not sure whether it's a, a condition or an informative, um, but the um, Surrey Wildlife Trust said about um, a landscape and ecological management plan as well. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Townsend. Yes, we would be requiring a landscape and ecological management plan to be submitted. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Any further comments? No. So uh, the recommendation is the revised recommendation is that permission be granted uh, for the reasons that we have discussed and the subject to the conditions that we've just heard. Um, can, can I have all those in favour of the recommendation to grant permission, please? And those against? Do. Okay, thank you. And we also have to have a uh, recommendation B to refuse in the event that the legal agreement to secure affordable housing is not completed. So I haven't got the wording for that, but um, it's, the, 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 the gist is there that if the, uh, if, the, uh, legal, if the conditions aren't met, then permission shall be refused. All those in favour? Councillor Gray, you wish to comment? You've just mentioned affordable houses, but surely that should also include the um, the pathway, the commitment to that as well. So all the things that, that we require out of the site, not just affordable houses. P 
Peter, you wish to comment? Thank you, Chairman. Um, I th with regards to the pathway, we think we can condition it, or we can condition it because it's all within the red edge boundary, um, and there's no requirement to put it into a legal agreement. If we don't have to, there's, there's no need to rely on that. Um, but yes, the, the affordable housing should be in there. Just one, one point, to just last members to agree that the time scale for completion is within three months of the date of resolution to grant, um, and just ask members if they could agree that as well. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Has everybody agreed on that? Really, thank you. And the recommendation B to refuse. Um, all those in favour of that, please. Yeah, right. Um, there are no items to consider in the exempt session, so that concludes the meeting for this evening. Thank you, members.